In today's video, we are going to create this PowerPoint presentation that features a fully interactive navigation menu, morph animations, and the ability to reset with just one click once it's finished. Let's get started. As always, the first step is to create a blank presentation. We'll remove the default placeholders and duplicate the current slide until we have a total of nine slides. We can do that by using the Ctrl D shortcut. Okay, so I'm adding nine slides here. This number will vary depending on your presentation. I'm using nine here as an example. So let's go back to the first one and now let's add a rectangle to it and cover the slide entirely. Now we're gonna change the color of this rectangle. I am selecting this gray over here. You can use whichever color you prefer. However, I recommend using a dark color for good readability and a pleasing appearance. Okay, great. With that done, let's create the cover slide. I am going to insert an icon here to represent a fictional company logo. So I'm gonna click on this icon and click on insert just because this is an example. And I will also add a text box below the icon that will represent the title of the presentation. So this is the main title. Okay, let me change the size of this text box and let me make sure it is centered on this slide, okay? Great, awesome. Now I'm gonna change the color of this icon, probably a bold color, uh, like this orange might work well. Since our background color is dark and neutral, in this case gray, we can use virtually any color palette and it will look good. That's why it's important to use such colors for the background. Um, I will also change the color of the main title to a light gray. In presentations like this, I usually avoid solid colors like black or white and go for darker or lighter shades of gray. I feel it adds more personality to the design. As for the font, I'll choose a body, so let me change the font here. Perfect, we have our cover slide. It's simple but clean. Remember, in many cases, less is more. Next, let's copy this rectangle, just a rectangle, Control c and paste it onto the other slides. Now, since we are going to use morph transitions, it is crucial that all elements participating in the animations are copied and pasted onto these slides. I've noticed some of you mentioning in the comments that animations aren't working, and this might be the reason. If I create a new rectangle on the next slide, instead of copying and pasting this one, the animations won't work. I have to copy this specific rectangle and paste it onto the next slide to make it work properly. This is because for more transitions, PowerPoint requires that the element being transformed is exactly the same. If you create a new shape, let's say a new rectangle over here, and let's say that now you come here and create a different rectangle, since this rectangle on slide 8 is different from the rectangle on slide 9, this rectangle will not transform into this one. I mean, this one into the other one. Okay, so the animations won't work for these blue rectangles because they are different rectangles. They are different instances of a rectangle. You need the rectangle to be exactly the same. That's why we need to copy and paste the same elements onto these slides all over the presentation to make sure the animations work properly. All right, what's next? We'll apply the morph transition to the entire presentation. To do that, position yourself on the first slide, go to transitions, click on morph, and go to apply to all. This way, the transition will apply to all slides in the presentation. Okay, the next step is to move the rectangles on each slide to their positions for the presentation. Since we are using morph transitions, as we move between slides, the rectangle will smoothly transition to the positions we define, creating an elegant effect. So let me move the rectangles here. Let's zoom out to make sure we can see where the rectangle is. Okay, so now let's move all the rectangles on the presentation. How you move the rectangles depends on your preference. I am placing them like this because I like how they look in the end, but this can certainly be adjusted. Now, when moving the rectangles, there are a couple of things to consider. Number one, we'll always move them in the same direction because we'll use this blank space to place the menu. And number two, when placing a rectangle at an angle, adjust its size so that it covers the entire slide when it moves. Don't worry if the movements aren't perfect. You can adjust that later. Lastly, the rectangle on the final slide won't be moved. It will cover the entire slide. This is the closing slides rectangle. Now, if we open the presentation, let's say we go back to the first slide and open the presentation, 
you can see how the rectangles move smoothly and elegantly. All right, let's start adding interesting animations to this presentation. The first thing we'll modify is the title. Position yourself on the first slide, copy the logo and the presentation title, paste them onto the second slide and adjust their positions. We'll move the title to the upper left corner and the logo to the right like this. Look, here are two useful tricks for you. First, to move the title to the correct position, go to the Home tab, then click on Select, Selection Pane, and this will open a panel on the right, containing all the elements you've added to this slide. If you click the icon next to the rectangle, see, it says Rectangle 1, and you click this icon next to the rectangle, the rectangle will disappear, making it easier to move the title to its final position. Clicking the icon again will make the rectangle reappear. The second trick allows you to move the logo horizontally without changing its height. Simply click on the logo, okay, and hold down the shift key and move the logo to the right or the left as you please. As you can see, now I can move it easily without changing the height. Of course, if you force it, you will be able to change the height. But if you use it smoothly, you'll be able to move it horizontally without changing the height. Okay, so let's back to its position. And now let's add a couple more elements here. First, we'll add the company name. So let me add a text box here below the icon. And let's add the company name. Uh, company name. Okay, the name of my company is company name. Really creative. I know you like it. And now let's uh, make sure this is center. Okay, and also let's make sure it is centered on this white space. We're gonna place it over here and we're gonna change the color to light gray as well. Probably not light gray, but, but a darker gray, something like that. Pretty awesome. And let's change the font to Abadi. Okay, great. Now we're gonna add an animation to this text. So click on it, go to animations, fade, and we're gonna change the start to uh, with previous. That's it. Let's return to the first slide and play the presentation to see what we have. So let's open this and look at this really great right okay so now let's add one more element to this slide uh while being in home let's add one more rectangle over here to underline the main title let's click on the gray rectangle and click here on the selection pane to hide the rectangle and make sure that we add this other rectangle to its correct position i'm gonna change the fill to this orange as well and i'm gonna also remove the outline now we're gonna copy this rectangle. Remember, we need to copy all the elements we want to participate on the animations within the presentation. And let's go back to the first slide and paste it here. And now here, without changing the height, we are gonna move the rectangle outside the slide, like this. Okay, so now when we play the presentation, we're gonna have... Oh. Pardon me, because I hide this uh, rectangle over here. So we need to show this rectangle. Let's try again and see the result. Here, what we have is an underline for the main title. Now, I think we can change the size of this rectangle a little bit. We're going to zoom in here. So something like this, let's say. Let me look at it. Okay, we are going to copy this rectangle and we're going to paste it over here again. Let's remove the first one and move this one outside of the slide the same way we did with the previous one. Let's play the presentation once again and now see how the line shows up below the title. You see? Look at that. Really awesome, right? Okay, so now let's copy all these elements, the title, the underline, the icon, and the company name and paste them onto all the other slides, okay? paste all these slides need to have the title the underline and the logo now that we are on the last slide let's create a closing animation for the presentation we'll move the title and the underline out of the slide and we'll also change the color of the company name to light gray and move both the name and the logo to the center of the slide now we need to remove the animation for the company name so let's go to animations animation pane and remove the animation for this. It is also important that you remove the same animation from the other slides. You won't need it. This is only needed on the first, on the second slide, I mean. 
Okay, on this one, we actually need the, um, the animation, the fading animation, but the rest can be deleted. With this done, if we go to the second to last slide and open the presentation, you'll see the closing animation. Pretty good, right? Now comes an interesting part, creating the interactive menu. For this, let's add another slide here. So right click, new slide, and remove the default placeholders. Let's start by opening this menu over here and click on this shape that is called block arc. We are gonna add this block arc to our slide. Now we need to create a circle for the menu, but we need several block arcs. We need, in fact, we need eight of this. So how do we know that we can allocate eight block arcs within a circle? Okay, so what I recommend you to do is to duplicate this shape and place the second one on top of the first one and make the second one half the size of the second of the first one, I mean. By doing that, now you can have four block arcs per circle, but we need eight. So let's uh, repeat the operation and duplicate the shape and make the second one half the size of the first one. We will probably need to adjust this further, but at least we now have a very good idea of how many uh, block cards we can allocate in a circle. So let's use the arrow keys to change the position of the shapes. And like I said, here you see that we will need to adjust the size of this block art. So let's draw a line here just to have like a guide to change the size of this block art. Now we're going to group everything and duplicate the group and create the circle. While having everything selected, remove the outline and change the color to, let's say, this gray color over here. Now we're gonna add a circle in the center of our menu. There we go. Let's remove the outline as well and change the color to probably this one. This one is okay. Select everything and change the size a little bit. Now copy everything and let's paste it over here just to evaluate the size of the menu. Okay, so I think this menu could be bigger. So let's go back to the slide. Okay, let's group everything here. I recommend you to group everything because it will be easier for you to work with the shapes when they are in a group. So let's try with this new size of the menu. I will delete this one. We are just testing the size of the menu, okay? I think this is perfect. Look at that. Okay, so let's go back. This is the perfect size for the menu. Let's place... Um, the circle over here. Okay, so this is the perfect size for the menu. Now we're gonna add the icons that we are gonna use inside the menu. So let's zoom in, go to insert icons. I will use icons from the PowerPoints collection. You can use whichever icons you prefer. Okay, let's insert the icons. And now we're gonna change the size of the icons and place them on the desired positions on the menu. Okay, now it is important that you place the icons like this. So when the menu rotates, they will end up being on the correct position. Okay, so once you have the icons on their desired positions, it is time to change the color of the icons. Um, I am gonna make them like gray. And now I will start adding links to the menu so we can navigate through the presentation by clicking on the icon. So click on the corresponding icon. Let's say this icon corresponds to the second slide. Remember that this needs to correspond with the content you are presenting on this slide. So let's suppose that this icon is related to the content on this slide. So this will link to the second slide, okay? So I will right click on the icon, click on link, go to insert link, make sure you are located here and place in this document and click on the slide you want this icon to point to, okay? So in this case, it's slide two, hit okay. This will go to slide three. So let's uh, repeat the process. Place in this document, slide three. Slide four, slide four, and so on. Now that you have added all the necessary links, select everything and make a group. Right click, group. Copy the menu and go to the second slide. Paste the menu and move it to the desired position. Copy the menu again and go to the first slide. Paste the menu and move the menu to the bottom outside of the slide. Now, let's suppose, like I said, that this icon here is related to the content on this slide. So we are gonna change the color of this element 
to make it appear like it has turned on, indicating that it is on the current slide. So we're gonna change the color of the block arc and we are also going to change the color of the icon inside of it. Okay, let's say this will be like, like gray. Okay, so there you go. Now move to the first slide once again and rotate the menu to a different position. Let's say like this. Now see what happens if we start the presentation here, if we play the presentation here, see what happens. Look at that, really good, right? Now what we're gonna do is to copy this menu again and paste it on the other slides, making sure that we rotate the menu to the desired position. Okay, so now we're gonna turn this off. Let's make it gray and let's turn this on because this is the one that is related to this current slide. Okay, so we need to repeat the process with each slide. We need to copy the menu, paste it on the next slide, rotate the menu, turn the previous one off and the current one on. Once you have finished adding the menus to the slides, um, now you need to add the content. So we will start by adding the titles to the slides. And just for you to know, it will not be necessary for you to add any animations to the titles because the morph transition will help with that. Uh, basically, the transition will make the titles appear and disappear smoothly when you move from the first slide to the next one. So don't you worry about adding animations to the title. I actually recommend you not to add animations to any of the elements of the content within your presentation because it looks like a little busy, okay? So I recommend you to paste the content with no animations. It will look really good and clean. So I'm adding dummy titles here. And I have prepared some dummy content that I will add to my slides. So we have finished adding the dummy content to the presentation. Remember, you will be adding your own content here. And now the last step will be to delete this slide over here. Let's delete this one. And also here on the last slide, you will click on the gray rectangle, right click, link, insert link, places in this document, and you will go back to, you will point to back to slide two. This will be your mechanism to reset the presentation if needed once it's finished. Okay, so now let's go back to the first slide and play the presentation to see the result. So this will be your main title. And as soon as you hit the space bar and start talking to your audience, the menu will gracefully appear on the screen and will let you navigate smoothly between your slides. And once you make it to the end of the presentation, if you want to restart, you just need to click anywhere on this big gray space you have here and the presentation will reset for you. So that is it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell icon to get a notification whenever I submit a new video. Take care and see you next time. Bye-bye.